you do it. And that was it. Here's another one, Charlie. A negative number. Don't get scared. 72 divided by 32, Charlie. What number divides evenly into both of those? 2. By 2, okay. So what's 72 divided by 2? 36. 36, because 36 times 2 is 72. What's 32 divided by 2? 16. 16, because 16 times 2 is 32. Now, again, we're going to divide by what, Charlie? 2. 2, that's right. Notice our answer is negative. We just keep our negative with us, because our answer is going to be negative. We're simply reducing the fraction. 36 divided by 2 is what, Charlie? 18. Okay, 18 divided by 2? I'm sorry, 16 divided by 2? 8 is 8. Very nice there, Charlie. Now, again, we can divide by 2's. All right, Charlie. Now, what's 18 divided by 2? 9. And 8 divided by 2? 4. Very nice. There's our answer. Notice we divided by 2, a 2, and a 2. Again, we could have did this problem in one step by dividing by 8. Or you could have started by dividing by 4 and then a 2. So try the problems in different ways, okay? So try dividing first by a 4 and then dividing by 2. Or just divide top and the bottom by 8 and you'll get right to the answer. Okay, negative 64 over 24, Charlie. What number divides evenly into both uh, 64 and 24? 2. A 2, huh? You're still chicken, huh? All right. 64 divided by 2 is what? 32. 32. What's 24 divided by 2? 12. It's 12. Very nice there, Charlie. Now, again, we're going to divide by what? 2. 2's. All right. 32 divided by 2 is what? 16. 16. 12 divided by 2? 6. 6. And again, we can divide by what? 2. 2's again. And what's uh, 16 divided by 2? 8. And 6 divided by 2? 3 is 3. Our answer is negative 8 thirds. So, again, this problem could have been done in one step by simply dividing top and the bottom by 8. And some of you probably said, seen that, but we've got to work in steps, because remember, we're in pre-algebra, we're just trying to get our techniques down. So, practice on your own time. All right, Charlie, here we go. 108 divided by 72. Uh-huh. What's the largest number that goes into both of these, Charlie? I don't yeah, know. That's a little bit hard to see, right? So, if we can't see it, we have both even numbers, so we'll divide top and the bottom by 2. Now, Charlie, 100 divided by 2 is 50, so what's 108 divided by 2? 54? 54, very nice. What's 72 divided by 2? What's half of 72? 36. 36, that's good. Some good arithmetic there. Now, 54 and a 36. Charlie, what number divides evenly into the 54 and the 36 up here? 2. Okay, we'll take a 2 there. And so what's 54 divided by 2? What's half 54? 27. And what's 36 divided by 2? 18. 18. Ooh, that's a tricky one there, huh? Okay, Charlie, now we have a 27 and an 18. Now, Charlie, what's the largest number that you can think of that divides evenly into a 27 and an 18? 3? Okay, 3 would work, but there is a larger number. Actually, a 9 would work, right? Because watch this, Charlie. 27 divided by 9 is what? 3 is 3, and 18 divided by 9 is 2. two. Like I said, there's different ways to approach these problems. It all depends on what comes to mind when you're looking for numbers that divide evenly into both the numerator and denominator. But you've got to practice, and the more you practice, the better you'll get at this. Now, this problem could have been done in one step, Charlie, by dividing the top and the bottom by 36. Right? So try that at home, and you'll see. If you start off with 108 over 72 and divide top and the bottom by 36, you'll get directly to the answer of 3 halves. But you've got to practice. I mean, you just can't start doing these problems in one step right away. You have to practice. Okay, here's another one, Charlie. 750 over 1,800. We're in the big time now. All right, Charlie. We start off by dividing top and the bottom by what? 10. Okay. What's 750 divided by 10? 75. 75 and 1,800 divided by 10 is 180. 180. Very nice there, Charlie. Now, what numbers divide evenly into a 75 and a 180? 3? Okay, we'll use a 3. Now, a 5 would work, too, but we'll stick with a 3, because what's 75 divided by 3? 25. 25. Now, what's 18 divided by 3, Charlie? 6. So what's 180 divided by 3? 60. That's 60. Again, we're working in steps. Now, Charlie, what number divides evenly into 25 and a 60? 5. 
It's a 5. So now we'll use the 5. 25 divided by 5 is what? 5. Okay, 60 divided by 5? 12. There you go, 5 twelves. Again, there's different ways of approaching these answers here. Now, notice we divided by 10, and then divided by a 3, and then divided by a 5. So this problem could have been done in one step by dividing top and the bottom by 150, because 10 times 3 times 5 is 150. But I know that's take some practice there, right? But work in steps. Try it on your own. Try the problem different ways. Let's do one more problem, Charlie, just to make sure we have it. 90 divided by 315. Remember, these problems are to be done without a calculator. Charlie, what number divides evenly into a 90 and a 15? Okay. Well, I'll help you out on this one, Charlie. It's a 3. Because 90 divided by 3, what's that, Charlie? 30. It's 30. Now, 315 divided by 3. Well, there's a little trick that you may have heard. How do you know if a number is divisible by 3? Well, there's a little trick where if you add up the digits of the number and that sum is divisible by a 3, then the number itself is divisible by 3. That always works. For example, 315. If you add the 3 and the 1 and the 5, notice you get 3 plus 1 is 4, and 4 plus 5 is 9, and that sum is divisible by 3, it means that 315 is divisible by 3. That is always true. So, Charlie, 315 divided by 3. Charlie, what's 300 divided by 3? 100. Okay, so what's 315 divided by 3? 105? That was the 105. Very nice there, Charlie. Now, here we go. 30 divided by 5 is what? 6. Okay. Now, 100 divided by 5 is 20. So 105 divided by 5 is what? 21. 21. Okay. Now, what number divides evenly into a 6 and a 21, Charlie? 3. It's a 3. That's right. Because what's 6 divided by 3? 2. That's a 2 because 2 times 3 is 6. 21 divided by 3 is what? 7. seven because 7 times 3 is 21. And there we go. Whew, that was a tough lecture, huh? Well, remember, there's different ways of getting to the answers here, getting to the fraction to lowest terms. Some of you should work in steps, and then the more you practice, the faster and more efficient you'll get at reducing fractions to lowest terms. Anyway, it's time to go. We need a break. We'll see you all again soon.